Hey guys, how you doing? Okay, let's get started on this. Okay. Let's get fired up here. We're hammering there, so he's gonna have to like play something like that, yeah. Yeah, all right. I'm going to try to go here and see if I can't hammer home that.
not counterattacking. Sweet. We got this guy now. Or this player, sorry. See here. Right. I'll give it a re send a rematch to the guy. No, 
let's give it a let's give it another go. We'll we'll get this. I just let it get out of control the time. I gotta stay ahead of the time on this. I thought too uh, too much. That's my fault. Let's get this let's get this position fortified. Let's see what we got here.
I think so. Let me see. Stop. Stop. Come on. There we go. Let's pull that up. We'll take a look. I think you're right. I just got, we should find out where I could have actually. That would be a good uh, spot to uh, analyze. Let's see. I think it's about, oh, right there, okay. So I should have played, ah, that's it. That, that, I knew there was a spot, and then it's there. So then when that happens, I just, you can actually play uh, your bishop back, right? Wow, it's uh, I guess the, yeah. Then you come there. Check. More position, more positional play here. Okay, let's see, is there any other spot that would be good? Let me click it. Let me see here. Okay. Yeah, you were right about that. Now uh, I could have won. At least had a slight advantage. So let's let's give it one more shot and see how we do.
now let's play here because then I can I can hammer home there <coughs> Let's hold control of that. Trying to figure out what I want to do here. What do I want to do? Yeah, I'm just going to play there. I almost think that's a, an exclaim move there, because uh, that, that's like totally uh, <laughs> insane of a move. I'm not giving myself one, but I'm just saying there's so much. I believe this is mate now. Oh, I was wrong. He's got one flight square. 
Drat. I thought he was going to, I thought he could, uh, yeah, I guess that wasn't me. That's okay. Hey, I got, I have so much threat here. Yeah, this should be game over. Boy, this was a really good game. There we go. Okay, I was going to go over uh, Ding Lauren versus um, Karawana, and it was the Candace tournament. Yeah, I think it, I, I really liked this move back here before we go over that, because this was really a move that I was, like, excited about playing. I, I'm not sure if, uh, let me see there. Yeah, that was, let me see here. Like if he took here, I was gonna actually take there, and if he took here, I guess I I could take. Let's see, if I take here, he could take, and then I can actually take. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking if he plays there, then I have that and. It's really, really interesting for sure. Puts the question to uh, to him about I have these this outside passer and I believe I have enough to actually win. Yeah, I can also play there too if I. Then you get your king involved. Yeah, because now if I can get that, which he takes there, and then I take there, and then I can actually slide over. If he checks, I believe I can come up there. And then I can get... Uh, oh, it wants there, okay. And then here. Oh, is it? Is it kind of like a Lucinda kind of sitch? Yeah, it is. Very similar to a Lucinda. And then when the king moves, we'll say here, I just, I come back down, yeah. And now, now he's stuck, but okay. But besides that, that guy win three pawns now, so it's game over. We'll do the uh, Karawana versus uh, Dig Lauren game here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll have it be Karawana. Because I want to, I want to show you guys from Karawana's side. It's really, really, really interesting. Okay, let's get, let's get our thing back. All right, there we go. He was able to even give up um, a piece, and he still was able to draw the game, which is pretty impressive. It was all based upon his light squared bishop. Karawana's light squared bishop. So he castles, castles. Um, and so he kind of played, he played a Cataline with uh, taking. So he's, he's up uh, a pawn so far, let me see. Yeah, he's up one pawn so far, but that, that you really can't hold it in a 
in the Catalan, it's not all. It's not about holding it. And so this this is when he sacrificed the um, the rook. But he did he did it for a reason. He um, gets the ability to have um, he gets this knight, which is a, a more active piece. So like when the rook when the bishop takes, queen takes, and a zero position. Even though this queen is you're thinking, what? Why doesn't he just take here? Um, I believe that that this is this is the reason. Then if he tries to like to come, let's say up. Uh, let's see where does what's the computer want? I think I worked this out before on chess twenty uh, uh, twenty four when they were actually playing this this morning. Yeah, you just you're now just he plays there, and then potentially I think you retreat back from, from oh you retreat there okay because the idea is, um, a weakness here or there so he's gonna have to retreat back here and at this point um, Caruana is actually okay it's it was really an odd on move sequence i was really interesting really interested when uh when he actually took the rook i was like i really thought i was like oh no this isn't good and then the computer read zero 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 and i was like whoa it's actually a zero position i know you're thinking why does it why does he just trade off he does that then he rehooks up and now he, he has this really compact uh, pawn structure and it makes up for the lack of a non-effective rook and all as well now this all this light squared bishop I mean light squares are all weak so there could be threats of mate in on these two areas there so that's why um, the queen took rather than did that and then Caruana attacked and it's, they were they were saying that there was two moves like what the computer said a move here and a move there the move actually that uh, Ding Lauren actually played was um, a game it was actually from I believe they said it was from one of his games that he played uh, like prior a lot like a couple years ago and uh, he actually drew in this position surprisingly um, he was white on this side and so he played very similar to the way he played prior to a game that he drew and that's why they, they wondered why uh, why he didn't play here and kinda you know keep the queen yes it's not attacking the bishop but it does have a lot of activity along this uh, H7 to B1 diagonal. So it also allows for the potentially maybe a bishop to come out, knight something. But he played with Ding's, uh, Ding's idea was to actually play bishop to A4. Uh, and so Caruana played the correct uh, move sequence. He played uh, uh, here, and then what happened was there was two. There were two move sequences that Caruana could play: bishop to, I mean, knight to um, a5. And the potential idea is, if that's played, you can actually win a uh, win a, a rook. Okay, this. Uh, uh, forget that. Forget that. Uh, erase that from. Uh, from your mind, that was a blunder on my part. And then he takes. And so when the pawn takes back, you uh, win a pawn. And you have enough activity with your uh, bishops and knights that you're okay. And there's really only two, three open, half open files, not very big. Not very big thing, so. He played there, and rather than knight to a5, which is what they thought he was going to play, he played uh, bishop b7, which is more of a, uh, in my opinion, more of a human move. Because 
at a later time you could play a5 uh, if, you, if need be or even bishop to uh, c5 is a good move as well and then you have somewhat of a or maybe even knight to uh, b4 something like that getting your pawns rolling and so the bishop took pawn takes and it'd be very tempting to take with our uh, bishop but he didn't want uh, Carawana didn't want to excuse me didn't didn't want to um, trade off pieces see he needs to keep the pieces on the board for uh, any chance of an attack so e takes d5 and um, the computer says here and potentially it's better for white but uh, uh, Ding actually uh, missed this line and played bishop to f4, which is more of a, like I'm saying, more of a human move. You're kind of a little, it's kind of a little scary in a player's mind to play that because you never know if you're going to get trapped. But he's got to understand that there's really no way of trapping um, getting trapped but that's kind of what they said he was afraid of is here and then if he plays there then yeah uh, you do have a uh, I think it's let me see what did they say oh here and then you can win a pawn but still they very equal so that was more of a uh, human move that a player would actually play because you're attacking the queen developing a piece with tempo and so that's I get that's what I would play. I, I guess I wouldn't play a7 because I'd be kind of a little hesitant to put my queen offside. But really, there's no uh, threat and worry about that because you have enough pieces guarding all the weak points. And even if there was a trade here, there, there, that only helps white. So queen went back to uh, f6. And um, he had to ha he had to have seen c5. C5 was a mega move. C5 was played. Then the bishop came back, and the knight come in, came in because what's going to happen is when that gets when that happens, you get a fork. So he forked. Uh, and then he took the knight. Pawn takes. Now Ding's. Um, uh, kind of formation is really kind of not good it's like he's got yes these are compact these pawns are compact but really there there's also a weakness here and he, he actually emphasizes the that the weakness so this this pawn now is pretty much okay he plays there and the computer's saying give back the uh, material but this is the sitch and then you can play it here they actually were analyzing this the commentators and it'd be kind of tempting to just take but you, you have to be really careful with uh, there so so potentially you could actually take here and then that loses so you can't really take so you're gonna have to like play pawn up and then you could take but like what the computer um, engine said is you can then guard the pawn so pretty much equal he played there it's that's more of a, a human move because humans want to uh, keep their material advantage and so why would you give back a rook you wouldn't um, want to get back a rook you would uh, want to keep you know your rook it just makes sense right but we always have to remember that chess isn't about material 
chess is about checkmate. You know, it's about a checkmate and a king. And so, the way, the way, <laughs> if you have to sacrifice a rook or uh, give it back for mate, you got to do what you got to do to win. That's why your forces, uh, your army exists on the board to begin with, is so that you can win. Your king's army is there to be victorious for him. So sometimes you have to um, not be materialistic. And I'm not saying that Ding was. I'm just saying, though, that uh, we all have a tendency to um, want to save material. And we sometimes miss the best uh, moves because of uh, wanting to keep our material edge. So I even have to work on that. Because when I like win a queen or a bishop or something, I want to reconsolidate. But sometimes it's best to give back the material and use the Aikido principle of letting your opponent come into your position and then at the right time you can deflect them and use their energy to uh, defeat them but you wouldn't defeat them their own energy defeats them and that's what yeah that's what I have to uh, continue to learn it's it's an ongoing uh, thing every day And now this uh, rook is under fire. So the pawn push. And so everything's basically, the computer's playing human moves now. Yeah, that that's what they were saying was really interesting here was that this is more of a, uh, I guess a computer move because you're not, you're, you're not wanting really to do that but sometimes you have to and it's like it, that's more of a move that I, I thought Fabi was going to play but he did he played a good move too which was um, he played uh, the ability so that he could implant a um, a queen here and then you know threaten mate but you have to remember that there is a uh, <laughs> This this is really huge, so I don't know. I the reason I would have played that as well is you're gonna win a pawn. So I'm not I'm not sure if if that move was the most accurate move. But remember, he still won a pawn. So then he comes back now. Now there's a threat of winning another pawn or something. It, Ended out, ended up really interesting. If he if he had traded here, it would have been a sl uh, equal as well. So still equal. But now now there's a uh, a threat, of potentially attacking here and keeping the pressure. The the king uh, can't really flee because if he ever goes here, you take there and it's like he's done for so so he has to play there which this actually at this moment gives uh, Fabi a uh, chance it, it actually makes it so that he has a slight advantage he plays the pawn push for a uh, flight square because what he's concerned about is is like a back rank, but what he needed to have seen, and which would have been hard for us, because think about it, he's down an exchange, and in, and in his mind, he's wanting to, I don't know what's going on in his mind, but I'm just saying, if it was me, I, I'll just say what's in my, what's going on in my mind, I'd be like, I want to get a draw, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not thinking really of a, a win, I'm kind of thinking of how to survive, and so he's thinking about, oh, I'm, trying to talk, not talk for him, but I'm just saying the position calls for uh, E8. Because it's still 0, 0. And then this is what the computer uh, says to play here. Potentially you have that there, and then here, here, 
then you have here. And if he tries there, you push up. And if he tries, tries. And I think it's still drawish. I think, oh, it's, it's in his advantage at that point. Okay. But it ended up just going to a draw, and there was really nothing more that he could really accomplish. It just draw, draw, draw. And then the bishop trades. And now, because uh, Fabi has a flight square for his king, there's really no way uh, Ding could actually make any progress here. It, it wouldn't have helped even if he had played there because um, pushing doesn't really do anything. And then he comes up and takes, takes. And uh, he wins a pawn there. Still equal. Yeah, you don't want to trade at this point. No trade. So. At this point, they uh, agreed to a draw, and they just decided it was better to draw than to, uh, you know, go any further. They were both getting low on time, so it was a really interesting game. So um, Kramnik draw drew against um, Karyakin, and Mamajaro and. Levon Drew, so it's a, again a three-way tie. Uh, Mamajaro, Karawana, and Kari, and Kramnik. So until uh, tomorrow, this I won. I picked, uh, in my opinion, one of the best ones. Probably I really didn't get to take a good look at um, um, Levon's uh, game, so potentially that might have been better. But I was like on pins and needles for this uh, this one here because I was like he's down a whole exchange and he's still draw and he still was able to draw I was like I was watching this all the way to the end it was cool so we'll uh, we'll do one more live game and then we'll go into our puzzles I don't know what's with people in the exchange variation, but it's like, really? I'm going to try to double up if I can. And this is getting interesting. Now I'm going to reroute my uh, knight in, see if I can't get a better uh, angle.
if I play rotation night. Pawn takes knight. Rook takes. Hmm. Do I really get anything out of that? Okay, but we'll, uh, can we make it a uh, non-rated one so that, because I just do rated ones sometimes just for fun. This is an interesting one for sure. <laughs> Potentially, probably, I might, I should have probably, I'll probably do that next. Keep an eye on that. See if I can't come over here.
Oh, Dread, I don't think that was the best move. No. Yeah, it's checkmate. That was a blender. Let's go over this. Uh, non uh, unrated one, and then we'll. I'll play one unrated one. Let me see here. I want to see where I made a slight inaccuracy. I know there was a way to. Uh, let's see here. You always got to make sure you find the proper move sequences. So I played right, played there, played up correctly so far. I played there, right? Oh, I should have taken with a, with my, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Oh, just, uh, uh, how about 10 minutes? Unrated though. And then takes and, yeah, I see. I missed, I missed that. I can't believe I, for some reason I thought I should just take with the pawn. Yeah. Let's give that a shot. Let's try this. complete the pyramid and I'm good I should be good here doing that. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh -uh. No, I don't want to play there either. That, that would be bad.
try to stay ahead of uh, the time. It's important to do that and remember to do that. There was 
Not that I could see there was nothing better than I could see. There we are. Okay. Well, we'll do some puzzles now. That was a good, good game, man. Good game. You played good there. Okay. Alrighty. End game is really important when it comes to. Uh, you know everything like that I don't know if um, my uh, taking the night was correct but I just figured you know what simplify down to a winning end game but I think I could have been okay but sometimes when it comes to uh, uh, right here I'll show you I'll just we'll just, just go over it real quick I want to show you um, we're just doing this for learning because it's let's see here so so that was right okay and then there there okay
that yeah so this end game end game is huge so if you can like barricade a pawn like that and two passers that's the sitch that was this was just the sitch here always be careful of rook move movements because that really uh, does a watuzi to your uh, position you have to make sure that they don't um, have like a, uh, a discovery. Discoveries is what they said. There's two things that grandmasters even have to work on because they're human: is discoveries and um, let me see, what is it? Forks. You know, it's it happens to every level of players. You sometimes get a fork and a discovery. It happened to uh, Ian with Fabiano when he uh, did the queen discovery and won the rook. That actually happened in the last uh, game in the um, England tour, the grand tour, the last one. The London uh, classic, I think it was called. Okay, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Okay. Trying to f see if um, that isn't the correct move sequence. Because I'm thinking that he could play, if he plays bishop f4, knight e6, bishop takes queen, knight takes uh, queen, bishop takes rook, Knight takes bishop, and then I guess bishop takes bishop. So at this point, if we played here, here, takes, 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 we, he'd have to take there, and then we take here. And it's like, um, I think we're up in exchange, so I'm not sure if, if he's going to actually do that. But I believe that that potentially is the idea that he that's our our goal is there because I don't see really anything else that uh, could be played here let's see anything 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 nothing 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 so that that has to be that that's just got to be the move oh Really? You're kidding me. That move? But doesn't he get a check? Oh. What was wrong with, um, there? Oh, mate three because of, oh, gotcha. Oh, okay. I missed that. I missed the check thing there. So, with the take here, even if you check there, you just move, okay, and there's no more threat. Oh, any advice? You have a really good uh, opening in middle. Um, I'd say probably some, uh, I know it's one of the most boringest areas, but some end game and also tactics are really, uh, really big too. So, um, we, uh, that's an area that we all need to work on, but end game and tactics because you have uh, really good middle game skills. Ooh, ah. I have I have somebody who likes end games as much as I do. End games are really fun, but they're sometimes a um, they get repetitive sometimes. But I I enjoy end games because it's where it's won and lost sometimes. 
actually the majority of the time because that's usually where uh, well yeah I gotta say you're you're not poor you're not poor we all could you see the middle game is so complicated the reason I I said tactics is the middle game is filled with tactics so if you wanted to improve your um, uh, sub if you wanted to improve your you know middle game tactics are a really good um, way of doing it and if you want to have a really good you know course for end game uh, Jeremy Silman's book the uh, end game course is a really good one so if you're wanting to uh, get uh, some end game understanding Jeremy Silman's Endgame course is a really good um, one to go over. He takes you from uh, rook, uh, two rook mates, uh, queen, double queen mates, queen and rook mates. He teaches you how uh, rook and king mates, and how to mate with a queen and a king. And then he teaches you. He goes a little bit into detail, but not very much into knight and bishop. Then he teaches you about the Lucinda, the Philidor's position. Um, let me see what else. He also teaches you how you can freeze with one pawn, you can freeze two pawns. And he teaches you also opposition, distance opposition, all that. Okay, that's a good one too. Yeah, see if what works for you, it like what um, Chess just said uh, here. I see uh, Allied Chess also has, um, uh, you know, end game. I've, I've done some of theirs too. So, uh, but if you're kind of a little puzzled or anything, you need just kind of a, you know, a starter, Jeremy Silmans is good, but also Allied Chess is a really good one too. But you might, um, I'm not saying it's not good. You might get confused a little bit. So just just take end games nice and slow. Work on, um, like, I know this sounds pretty basic. Work on your, your rook, uh, king and rook mates. That's really, really big. If you can uh, mate with a king and rook. Hey, how you doing? Let's see here. But tactics are, they said, the heart of the middle game. Ooh, that would be cool. Yeah. Oh, also, you know what's a really good one to, to work on is two bishops, mates. That's a really uh, good one. The reason that he puts any knight and bishop mates in there is it's really important that you learn how those two pieces coordinate together because they really are a, a tag team of destruction if you know how to set them up properly they're like they're like the tag the 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 doom raiders or whatever you want to call them uh. Yeah. Yeah, that's one too. He's got him. He got. He's got all different times types. He even shows you how to what a good bishop and a bad bishop looks like, and an active bishop and a uh, not not active bishop. All of it. That's exactly right. I I can't. I have to. I agree with you, Chess, on that. That it is. That is a um, rook and pawn are huge. He teaches you uh, all. I gotta say, it's it really helped me in my end game understanding. So, just. Uh, there's a lot like and there's also a lot of um, stuff on uh, uh, YouTube um, 
there's a gentleman named um, Backyard Chess Professor. He does it. I don't know if he does one on Endgame, but he he does use he does Jeremy Silman's um, method. He talks about it on there, and that's a really good one. Also, if you're wanting to kind of have somebody talk you through it. So he takes you from his very beginning all the way to where he is now. So that's a really good one. Let's see here. I'm trying to. F this is really good. Yeah. I was wondering about. I was wondering about that too. It's like that was a little concerning for me as well. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, Doki. So uh, basically, rook takes rook happened. So what do we do here? Do we take with? We can't take with the queen. So we we basically let's see if rook takes d8. Um, what do we get after that? I mean, what is? What do we get? What do we get? So rook takes a rook takes d8. One second, we get drink water. Yeah, there's a lot of end game studies on YouTube if you're more visual. YouTube has a lot of end game studies, so if you're interested in that, there's a bunch on uh, YouTube. Trying to see, is there anything else that um, I really don't see? If we take, what what could he do? I don't see any checks that he can play. Probably would take with the pawn at that point. And then pawn takes pawn. We're so close to trap. If we take here, our uh, potential next move would be um, bishop c8, and we have the queen trapped at that point. So, who takes rook? Okay. Oh, wait a second. Nope, not. No, he can. He can come out of the out of the box. I was wrong about that, Trot. I knew taking was the only way to go. <sighs> okay, Doki. <laughs> I 
Okay, Bishop. So he can't take that. I think about it because we can win the rook. Let's see there. Bishop to C8. Trying to see if there's anything else that he could. He took the pawn. Yeah, we can't win the the rook because of uh, the bishops guarding it. Now, now that I, now that we look at that, drat. I think that has to be the only move that makes sense in the position. Then we, t but drat, I, ah, yay, 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 yay. And we gotta get off that open file, but we we can't move our really we can't move our queen, so I'm thinking something like potentially maybe queen b eight, but I don't wanna play passive. I don't like playing passive. No, it's okay. Hey, you know what? Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. We'll get this.
I'm thinking that this potentially is the move because a silly move that makes sense even if we even if it takes here we could take the queen and even if rook takes we're uh, uh, well I guess we do have a problem don't we no rook can't take because of the bishop so yeah that's the, that's the move because if takes here we take there and then if he actually wait a second what's it say oh wait a second we can that's right ah why not think about that you can actually take there snikies then when you take here you take back ah there we go there we go yeah Let's get the let's get some points back here guys. Let's get some points back. Feeling all right now. Feeling right now. Ooh. I see uh G six. And then we draw the after G six. And here and then there. So here let's see does he have any checks? The best that he could do is takes 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 and then we just move but oh, wait a second that's that's checkmate there There we go. Good find there. Good job. See, you just take your time. You uh, do the Aikido principle of just patience. Wait for your opponent to uh, make the wrong step, and then you use their energy against them, which would be their attack. Oh, Kidoki. Hmm. Let's see if I play here. And then he retreats right there. <laughs> We have to decide which king move we want to go to because we go king to a one. He's got knight. Actually, more like knight there. And then we have a. Uh, but then he's got there. Hmm. But actually, that doesn't. Well, does that work? Yeah, that does work, Drat. Okay. Um, 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 um. Hmm. Of 
Oh, I see. After, let's say, if we play here, it goes there. We go, actually, we're not going to go there. We'd probably more likely go here. And then at that point, we can threaten to take, take, check. And we win our, um, the knight. So here, that does walk into somewhat of an attack. But I don't really see anything better because if we move here, potentially this attack's coming anyways. Yeah, I like King E. You're joking me. Oh, the rook's under attack. Gotcha. For some reason I missed the, that. I miscalculated on that one. It's okay. We'll get the points back. Don't worry. This takes. Actually, we can't. Well, if we take, queen takes. I was thinking about attacking the queen, like something here or there, one of those. I'm trying to figure out which one to use, though. One sec, I'll be right back.
Let's see here. Trying to figure out which one of these, because we need to attack the queen. Because when he plays, I don't. I'm thinking that potentially that might be because we want to keep this along here, and then we can also potentially double up. Right, but then then you can uh, you can take there. And then if the king moves up, you actually I think you can um, go queen check. Knight for a pawn. What am I missing here? That's what makes me think potentially. Well, if we play, see here, takes, takes. Oh, sorry. There, 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 there. Oh, he guards this. I was thinking maybe in, uh, Queen, uh, Queen F one potentially if B six Pawn B6, doesn't he just push? Our opponent push. And I guess we could play there, but then he pushes.
He might even just take at that point. Let's see here. He pushes. There he takes. Takes. And then we ha he has a knight. He has a knight discovery. <clears throat> That's all I can, let's see. If he plays there. He might have to stay there <clears throat> at that point. So if we play here, he plays there. We play here, he has to play all the way back there. And then we, uh, actually, if we play here, he has to stay in contact with with this uh, here, otherwise he'll get checkmated. Yeah, this is the move. Because if, uh, if he plays something like that, We come up and then he has to, let's say, place here. He plays there. And then I think we, we can actually. take Oh, and then you just, uh, if he comes here, you just take, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Do one more. <sighs> okay. See here, the queen's really in a pickle here. Uh, D5. Hmm. Only Sitch is, I think he's got uh, after take. Oh, yeah, he can't take, can he? Let, no, if he plays there, we just come back and we can actually take with the bishop, not the knight. So if he plays here and he comes there, 
we uh, we take with the knight a bishop as so. well. Interesting. There. Hmm. Rather interesting. Yeah, I believe you're right on that. Play there. I'm thinking maybe queen. I'm thinking queen check. And then. See, I don't know if that's the move because it allows him to come up here. So I'm trying to see if check. If he comes here. Well, I don't know if that works either because if, if we play there, he could actually take. Yeah, so I don't know if... Th I think we have to go with our discovery attack with potentially knight to... Um, Bishop. I really don't see anything better than here with a discovery. Because then when he comes up there. And there. Yeah, that's, that's the best I see. What about this here, though? 
Oh, he plays there, and then he's threatening. Okay. He has to play there, and then if he takes there, then you take. Okay. Oh, you're at, you're up a whole ruck at that point. See, queen takes. Queen takes, bishop check. Oh, nope, we can't do that. Then the uh, queen would take back. Ah, this is this is a pickle for sure. A pickle and a half. But I, I still think that that has to be the that's got to be the move. But after queen takes, knight takes, rook takes. What do we got? We got nothing. I believe that it, it's it's got to be queen to, uh, I mean rook uh, d d7. It has to be rook d7. So if there's a check, we just drop our rook back, and this is still under attack. Thank you. The only problem with uh, C7 is he's got mate there. This is a, uh, a definite sitch, isn't it? Because this is a this is a mate threat, and that's a mate threat. So how do we? Uh... No, there's something here that we're uh... ah, silly me. Why don't we just drop our queen back to g uh, g1, and it covers everything. Queen G1 and it covers everything. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh. We just take. I can't believe. Oh my word. You just take. What was that? I missed something there. I was so close to the attack. That's, that's funny. That's funny in uh, so many ways. Uh. Well, let's let's try. Let, we'll we'll give this like five five minutes. We'll see if I can. If we can't solve this in like five, then I gotta log. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to end on a positive. Up and up. Okay. Let's see if we play Rook uh, C1, Knight checks, King H1, and then if he tries, like it takes here, we just take the Queen. So here, if he tries, so here, if he tries here, we just bring our other rook up there and we're attacking his queen. Then if queen takes queen, rook takes. Actually, we, let's see. So we don't even need to worry about attacking the rook we just oh that's funny so here here bishop takes rook uh, queen takes queen and then uh, rook takes queen and we're up a uh, whole exchange after that yeah We move here. He well, I don't know if he could check there. Well, he could check here. See if we if we played here, he could check there. We actually have two spots we can go to. H1, he takes, and then we take the queen. If we play there, he actually has there. And if we try to run, then he's got check. And when we run here, he checks with his rook, and we lose the king. So the only move that we 
um, we have any chance without having a problem is king to h1. That sounds insane, I understand, but that's the only move that holds the position. Right, but we have to remember that this right here, if he uh, takes, we actually win the queen. So uh, we get we get a um, this has this is the move there. And at this point, um, we can actually play bishop takes rook at this point. Well, nope, 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 nope. My bad. First, you have to play. My bad. First, you have to play queen takes queen, rook takes, rook takes rook. Uh, let's see, queen takes queen, rook takes rook takes queen, bishop takes rook, knight takes. Queen, rook takes rook. Bishop takes. We're on a draw at that point, though. I really don't want to draw. I want to, you know, KO the guy. We're down in material. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. You're right. Yep. That you're a hundred percent right on that. I I for, I didn't see that after he takes here right e d one and that um, actually you win a rook, don't you? Yep, you're right. You're right. This that actually uh, I will. No, you're right. He could actually take there. Yeah, it'd be lovely if we could, but he has there. And then once we move, uh, the king takes the bishop in. We have uh, equal material. R. What if we just move our king up? Nope, can't do that. That um, that loses to uh, knight takes check, and after takes king takes, and we're the one that's now down um, uh, an, a whole piece actually at that point. We're down a rook, so we can't move our king. We uh, we can't take here because that that equals that's equal material after we move uh, he takes so I guess our only move would be let's see queen takes queen Actually, I'm wrong. 
I think you still can, if I'm not mistaken, take the knight because even if he takes here and you move, if he tries taking there, your queen slides up and wins the rook. So it is queen takes knight. That wins a whole piece at that point. Because then uh, what would happen is after here and there, he has to retreat his queen back. And then um, you then can attack it with the rook. Yeah, that this is. Oh, you're kidding me. Really? Okay, well, we uh, we gave it a, <laughs> that was so close. I really thought the other one was going to work, but I didn't guess see it all the way to the end. That's okay. Well, uh, we'll pick up from uh, here tomorrow. Well, guys, continue, you know, pushing on with chess. Keep getting better, you know what? Uh, you only go back to learn. Learning is... Uh, what it's all about sometimes it's the hardest thing to do is to actually accept learning lessons so just you know what you have to accept the learning lessons learn from it and you know what then you won't uh, be doomed to repeat it again so guys remember you know when we get it right we get to say I love it when a plan comes together and guys just remember us uh, we got to pray for Wesley So, Caruana, and the safety of all the candidates in uh, Germany. So, that are Ber Germany, Berlin, I think that's where they're at. Just that they're safe and uh, that they play good chess for us all to enjoy. Okay, well, guys, as Wesley So says, serve the Lord Jesus. And as I say, God bless. And I'll see you next time on. Uh, Chess Cruncher TV. Have a great rest of the night and be blessed. I will be back. Okay. Bye bye, guys.